Human beings are amazing and unique, but we're all also incredibly like each other. Every human individual is a carbon-based life form, and we're all eukaryotes, or organisms whose cells have a nucleus, which is sort of like the command center of the cell that's within a nuclear envelope. What would you say if I were to ask you, what do 10 people have in common? Well, according to the National Coffee Association's Atlas of American Coffee, 7 in 10 Americans drink coffee every week, with 62% drinking coffee each day. Coffee is an interesting beverage. It spawns shops and franchises, fuels the all-nighters of many a college student, and 70 cups of coffee at once could kill you. Coffee is also an inspiration for an interesting addition to the canon of literature the coffee table book sitting on none other than the coffee table. Now, what you're about to see is a video clip that goes along with a brand new coffee table book that's going to be produced by Christ Jesus Ministries LLC. In this clip, I was conducting an in-person interview with Dr. Stephen Meyer, who received his PhD in the philosophy of science from the University of Cambridge and is the director of the Discovery Institute Center for Science and Culture in Seattle. I'll tell you more about the book after you see this interview clip. Roll the clip. My colleague William Dembski has written a very important book called The Design Inference, in which he first points out that intelligent human agents are capable of recognizing the activity of other intelligent agents, and we do it all the time. Uh, a classic example that we've used in the intelligent design movement or research community is the faces that are carved on Mount Rushmore. When you see those faces, you immediately recognize that there is something, was something at work there other than say wind and erosion, a completely natural process. You know right away that there was an intelligent sculpture. Dembski asks the question, why? What is it about those faces that indicates a designing act, a, the action of a designing intelligence? And he points out that there are actually two factors. Many people are tempted to say, well, they're, they're just very improbable. And indeed they are. Improbability is part of it. Uh, it's very improbable that you would see such faces on a mountain. Uh, but it's not just the presence of an improbable shape or structure, it's also that the, the structure that you see matches a pattern that we know from independent experience, namely the, the shape of the human face, or even more specifically, the shape of the president's faces that we know from pictures in history books or uh, uh, the portraits on money, for example. So it's that, uh, Dembski argues that it's the combination of a pattern that we know from independent experience, or that can be known from independent experience, and an, imp and an improbable one at that. So it's improbability, plus pattern matching, which he calls a specification. It's a particular kind of pattern. Um, and now there's ways to apply his formalism in other contexts. Let me give you another example. Up north of here, in uh, I'm in Seattle now, if we go up Puget Sound on the Victoria Clipper ferry boat and go into the Victoria Harbor in uh, Canada on the, on the Vancouver Island, there's a, a wonderful harbor there. And, at different times during the year, they have flowers that are arranged in very colorful patterns. One time while I was on the Victoria Clipper heading into the harbor, at some distance, I was uh, I became curious about the pattern. I slipped my glasses on and boom, I made a design inference. Why? Well, because the flowers were arranged red and yellow in a pattern that said, welcome to Victoria. So we had a very improbable arrangement of flowers but one that also conformed to an independently given pattern, the shape of the English letters, but also the, the arrangement conveyed uh, or expressed a, a set of functional requirements, grammatical requirements, syntactic requirements that were necessary to convey information. And so the, it was, this is another example of a small probability, an improbable event, which also involves a pattern match but we can also see that pattern matching can be more than just a shape that's similar to another shape. It might be um, a, a, a functional requirement that we can discern more with our abstract mind. If we think of all the different ways that you could arrange English letters within that combination or, of, of possibilities, 
there are a few that form a kind of functional target where actually something could be meaningfully conveyed. And so if we have an actual sequence that matches that smaller target sequence that reflect those functional requirements for conveying information, that's another sense of pattern matching. And uh, Dembski's mathematical formalism captures both of these ideas, a set of functional requirements as a creating a kind of target within a larger set of total possibilities, many of which would not be functional, and also the idea of just a straight up pattern match of a shape matching a shape or a, um, a recognizable configuration of matter rec that matches something we've seen before. So in Dembski's formalism, it's a small probability and a specification. The specification concept is, um, is intuitive, but there's some subtlety to it that we can also work out mathematically and probabilistically or, or, or conceptually. So that those two things together invariably indicate intelligent design. And one final point on this is that these two things together also are, um, uh, what, what mathematicians, they have a big word, they say it's isomorphic. It's, it has a conceptual uh, mapping that can be made to the concept of information, but not information in any sense, information in the functional sense, where the arrangement of characters is specific to perform some function. And in the, in the DNA sequence, we have a small probability and a specification a, a set, uh, an exemplification of a set of functional requirements in the, in, the, in the coding regions of DNA that are very improbable, so that would indicate design, but we can also say DNA contains information in that sense of being not just uh, an improbable arrangement of characters, but an improbable arrangement that are specifically arranged to perform an overarching function. And when we find that kind of information, functional information or specified information, or what some original life scientists have called specified complexity, where complexity is synonym for improbability, when we find that in a system, invariably, such a system has been designed by an intelligence. In other words, whenever we know that the causal story of how specified information arose, invariably a mind has been at work, whether we're talking about a hieroglyphic inscription or a paragraph in a book or a section of computer code, information of that kind always arises from an intelligent source or from a mind. So when we find that kind of information in DNA, in RNA, the large protein coding macromolecules inside the cell, uh, we have a strong, strong evidence that a designing intelligence played a role in the origin of the information present in those molecules, which is after all, also something that's necessary to produce life in the first place. I hope you enjoyed the clip with Dr. Meyer. It was an honor to get to meet him and the other members of the Discovery Institute. They're all brilliant and kind people and a pleasure to talk to in person and an interview. Speaking of which, this interview is going to be one of many that accompany the points that are raised in the coffee table book itself, which will be a complete with photographics and artwork. This new book will be addressing all of the top reasons as to why a person might reject God's existence and a relationship with him, and show you how to help remove those stumbling blocks that may be in the way of a person's faith from growing. This book will be the collective voices of the unique perspective of scientists, theologians, philosophers, and historians. We'll keep you updated in the community tab on the Christ Jesus Ministries channel about when this new book is coming out. And something else to look forward to in 2022 will be Christ Jesus Ministries' new series, Skeptic of Doubt. This series is a new video series that will be available for free for everyone forever. This new series will go through all the major categories of alleged Bible contradictions and demonstrate how the Bible is the authentic and the inspired Word of God. All of the projects that we've undertaken for Christ Jesus Ministries LLC have been funded by the work that my family and I do. However, we have had kind-hearted souls who believe in our mission to uphold the Word of God and to take care of the physical and mental well-being of others give gifts unto us. And we would again appreciate as we undertake these new projects if those of you listening could please share a gift with us too. You can donate to Christ Jesus Ministries by sending a check to our P.O. Box. It's also really easy to donate over PayPal. You can click on the link in the description and then donate over PayPal by entering the amount that you would like to donate and then clicking donate with PayPal. Thank you so much for being a cheerful giver this year. and May God bless you as you close out this year. Best wishes for 2022, and remember, 
the truth saves.